In search for his family's approval, Miriam's brother joined Burkina Faso's army. With a uniform comes respect, but also the risk of death. She didn't make much of the call he made one night announcing he was going to the front line. The war in the north feels far away from Ouagadougou, almost like it's happening in a different country. But now the reality of war is hitting home. Bodies of soldiers are returning in coffins. Among them, Miriam's brother. He was killed in an ambush by Al-Qaeda fighters. When I see soldiers' uniform, I want to break down and cry. It reminds me of my brother, of a corpse laying in a coffin still. The sight of uniforms makes me scared. Fear is spreading. Millions are displaced. Al-Qaeda and ISIL fighters continue to gain ground. Almost a week after Colonel Damiba took power in a coup, there's a precarious calm in the capital. And fear that with political instability, there will likely be more attacks. This is what is left of Burkina Faso's military headquarters. It was attacked in 2018 by an Al-Qaeda affiliate. Four years on, it still has not been rebuilt. Colonel Damiba promises change in the military to shore up the morale of troops that has suffered so many losses. And it starts with a call to arms broadcast on the radio across the nation. The message of Colonel Damiba, join the fight to save the country. I am ready to take up arms because each time they attack, they put our country in mourning. Why is this happening to our country? Why are we under attack? Those that killed her brother are Al-Qaeda fighters, but only by name, says Miriam. They are locals. She believes poverty is fueling the violence and not ideology. Poverty and unemployment means young men are lured by armed groups. We need to find a way to feed families and bring back the state's authority in those remote areas. While she cannot bring back her brother, she hopes peace can be brought back to this nation gripped by bloodshed. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera, Ouagadougou.